Hello! Welcome to the first unit of this tutorial. In this unit, we will introduce and define open science. To start with, access to science and scientific knowledge is actually a human right. It is part of the Human Rights Declaration. Article 27 states that everyone has the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. Open Science aims to participate in uh, ensuring that this right is respected. So now, let's see how Open Science is usually defined. A first definition of Open Science, taken from Wikipedia, is that Open Science is the movement to make scientific research, including publications, data, physical samples and software, and its dissemination accessible to all levels of an inquiring society, amateur or professional. This definition is very close to the one used by Foster Open Science. Foster Open Science is one of the main organizations that aim at promoting open science. Historically, open science is the meeting point of a number of movements or communities. Among them are a number of scientific movements to improve specific fields. One of those uh, that we will encounter in several places in this course is um, rooted in psychological science and others, um, well, things like preprint actually owe more to elf sciences and physics. Another important movement uh, that contributed to open science is the open source software movement. Um, and all that being said, the history of open science is still being written. Another definition which can be found in one of the handbooks for open science is of open science as a collection of actions designed to make scientific processes more transparent and results more accessible. The goal of open science is thus to build a more replicable and robust science, which open science does by using new technologies, altering incentives and changing attitudes. Another definition that has been proposed by compiling and reviewing the literature on open science um, and this definition is that open science is transparent and accessible knowledge that is shared and developed through collaborative networks. Open research in and of itself relates to the process of knowledge production and dissemination. Open scholarship uh, can be understood as including open research plus the resources enabling it, including, for instance, free open source uh, softwares, and open scholarship as a term is sometimes used interchangeably with open science. Now, despite definitions of open science as one movement, um, and as the previous definitions already hinted at, there are a number of different aspects or focuses that can be found in open science. They have been presented as five different schools of thought, uh, and the five schools are the following. The pragmatic school focuses on collaborative research. The infrastructure school is most concerned with the technological architecture, uh, which includes creating and maintaining a number of relevant platforms and tools. The democratic school focuses on the access to knowledge, uh, meaning publications, and sees the current publication system in which most articles are hidden behind paywall as one core obstacle to science being open. The measurement school focuses on alternative impact measurement, so in this perspective, efforts have to be focused on ways in which scientific products are evaluated, because they matter to what scientists are incentivized to do. And finally, the public school is most concerned with the accessibility of knowledge creation, which means how much is the public involved uh, with science, including uh, with how research agendas are set. And of course, these different schools are not mutually exclusive. They are just a way to order the different possible focuses in open science. Now, my favorite way to define open science is provided by a 2015 article entitled When Will Open Science Simply Be Science? In this article, Watson defines open science as the practice of making everything in the discovery process fully and openly available, creating transparency and driving further discovery by allowing others to build on existing work. He also goes on to describe six pillars of open science, open data, open access, open methodology, open source, open peer review, and finally open education. All these six pillars are core open science practices. 
Beyond the six pillars we mentioned, there are more extensive taxonomies of the various practices and aspects understood to be part of open science. In particular, the taxonomy established by Foster Open Science covers open access, open data, open reproducible research, open science evaluation, open science policies, and open science tools. We will cover a fairly large amount of this taxonomy, uh, but we will also focus mostly on what individual researchers can do by themselves. The general approach for this tutorial is to give you an overview of what exists under the general umbrella term of open science and give you the basics of these different practices so that you can then pick which practices make sense to you and to your research. Open science encompasses a number of practices, each of which has a different goal and fulfills this goal in different way and in its own specific way. All of them aim to contribute um, to making science more open um, in one or more of the definitions we detailed. Some are to be implemented at the level of institutions, which have actual authority and ability to impact which incentives are imposed on researchers. Here we will focus mostly on practices and initiatives that can be undertaken by individual researchers themselves. Uh, guidelines for funders, journals and other institutions involved in research are also available and if that's what you're interested in, I'll suggest looking at some of the references that come with the videos. Some practices are better tailored to some scientific inquiries than others. And I'm borrowing here a metaphor suggested by Christina Bergman of open science as a buffet. So the idea is that please pick what fits your own needs and wants. It's absolutely okay to adopt open science practices in a pretty piecemeal fashion. Another general thing to take into account is that not all open science practices work equally well for all scientific fields. So for instance, pre-registration is a practice that was developed mostly for experimental hypothesis testing research, and it might not necessarily apply to all scientific approaches. Despite these differences, the common basis to all the different parts and practices of open science are the values. And most uh, practices aim to make science more transparent and reproducible. We will also detail how the different practices contribute to these goals as we go through the course. Keeping with this buffet approach, um, this tutorial will cover the following. Reproducibility, replicability and all the challenges in scientific research. Pre-registration, open methodology, including open methods, open materials and open code, open data, and finally, all practices related to publication, uh, preprints, open peer review, and open access. After this point, uh, the course uh, focuses on presenting different open science practices per se, uh, but there are a few themes that will appear several times or at different moments uh, when presenting different practices, so I'd like to highlight and talk about them now. First, openness often comes in degrees. Uh, there are standards established for each of the practices we will review, but these standards might not always be reachable for a number of valid reasons. Then, open practices also ensure robustness to your scientific product. If your contents are hosted by a third party, it means that you don't have to maintain the infrastructure by yourself, so this participates in making your scientific product more robust through time. Another aspect of open science is that contents are licensed in ways that make it possible and easy to reuse them. Finally, a last aspect that we will come across in multiple places uh, are questions of findability and accessibility. Basically, it's great to have your contents available somewhere on the internet, but it's much better if it's actually easy to find them. One final word in this introduction is on how open also means both diverse and inclusive. Diversity benefits science overall, and open science aims at making science diverse in a number of ways. In particular, open science provides a number of opportunities to interrogate systemic biases. For example, when designing studies or when proposing changes to the metrics used to evaluate scientific outputs. Open science also aims at removing barriers and obstacles. Uh, as we'll see, open access and preprints, for instance, aim at making science accessible to all. Finally, open science has also been able to help with diversity by providing tools for large-scale collaborations across different countries.